Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today we're sitting down for an in-person conversation with Ben for his third appearance on the show. Today's education system lacks the exposure to simple financial literacy. We dive deep into what is wrong with the curriculums in school and some ways to improve. Make sure to check out the links in the show notes and leave a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify if you enjoyed the episode. All right, welcome to the show, Ben. Hi, guys. Good to be here, finally in person. Yeah, this is our first in-person interview, I think. First as far, I think we had Danny on like one of our first days, but then this is this is the first time we've ever actually done an in-person interview. I'm excited. Well, we had a uh, we had Walker and Joe, but I oh guess wait, that's right, that was a little different. So yeah. like, if you haven't seen that, make sure you watch it. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. But I guess we're going to talk about some financial literacy. I think it's really important, and it's kind of like why we started the whole podcast too. It's like we want to try to spread knowledge for people. But like, what is financial literacy? Is like the real question for for someone listening who hasn't heard the term financial literacy. What is it? Um, so financial literacy is basically, um, I mean, it's being literate with your money. So what that means is uh, knowing how to budget, knowing how to read balance sheets, knowing how to basically use your money wisely. So, you know, a lot of people, they, they graduate college and they get their first, you know, mid five-figure job or even a six-figure job and they've never seen that type of money before. So for a lot of people, it's like, okay, why don't I just go buy like a BMW or something, you know? So knowing how to make those decisions is super important and that's what financial literacy is all about. Right, and a lot of people just, you get like a, a bunch of money and people are just like, oh, I'm getting more money so I should spend more money. <laughs> but that's not always the best case scenario. Like you should think about where you're spending your money and maybe you can set yourself up so you don't ever have to even work a job if you put your money in the right places. Yeah, I mean, eventually you're gonna have to retire. So the more you start saving, the sooner you can make that happen. Right, and you don't want, you don't want to work till you're, you're seven years old. Yeah, and not just like being financially literate. Once you graduate college and get that job and all that money, even beforehand, knowing like becoming financially literate in in that area, and then when that does happen, not only are you ready, but you've been smart with your money all through school, to the point where you're even more set up for when you retire, which yeah, sure. hopefully is years earlier than normal. Yeah, I think uh, it's hard though. For, I feel like people don't know like where to get started. It, we we kind of mentioned it in our budgeting, well, not budgeting. Uh, Paychecks is like to start a budget. When did, when did you first like? Do you remember like when you first started like a spreadsheet of a budget or like when was the first time Ben you like sat down and like actually yeah. put something together? So I got my first internship slash job when I was uh, a first year in high school. So I got this uh, minimum wage job from the city, but you know I was making some money uh, more than I was spending. So yeah, I mean I started a spreadsheet tracking my expenses, tracking how much I owed to the IRS, um, and that was. That was kind of where my journey began. Did, when did you, uh, did you do like every single penny you earned or was it more just like, okay, let me just throw like 50 bucks and just like, did you ballpark it or was it like something you did every single cent? Yeah, no, I mean, I did it to the penny, but I also didn't really spend any money. Um, I think I, I probably saved most of that money just because, you know, I mean, your, your parents pay for most of your stuff anyway. Yeah, There's no true. reason to spend more than you have to. That's true. I'm trying to I'm trying to have the money so I can like buy my kids stuff and like help them learn, but also not to the point where they have to work like 40 hours a week, and like that would that would suck if you're going through college and you do have to work. Like you gotta you gotta try to help help yourself now so then you can help your kids later. And if you don't teach them, then they're gonna be just worse off than you are, and and you'll just mess up your whole generation of of family. That's a good point. But I guess um, like being in school we're supposed to be learning these things or like it would be helpful to be learning these things but it doesn't seem like we do yeah i know it's like it's so stupid i remember like when, when i was going through college or not college when i was going through high school they said like you had to take this like uh this like one like it was a computer class and like you had to take computer class to graduate and the the, the broad range of classes that you could take was like it wasn't even like just finance specific it was like there was like obviously there was like accounting and then there was like a budgeting class there was like a business management class but then there was also like you could take an excel class or you could take a powerpoint class so that's not even like it was a requirement but it had nothing like you could take a non-financial class and you could still graduate which doesn't make any sense to me because like money is literally everything and why would you want to let someone graduate high school and you don't even teach them about money it kind of yeah. doesn't make sense. Because, I mean, even in college, uh, you know, when you move out uh, from living with your parents, you uh, not only are, do you, can you possibly be taking on six figures of debt that you can't afford, but you're also spending money on your own. So, you know, it's, it may be hard not to go out to a restaurant every week with your friends, but if you can't afford that, it's important to learn from a younger age, you know, not to spend money that you don't have. 
right? I don't think teachers like do a good job of that. Like, I feel like I've never heard like I maybe heard like one teacher like say something like save your money. You're like, or don't spend your money on like stupid stuff. Like, that's not even a topic of conversation in any class I'm in, which doesn't make any sense. And it's like they just follow this like strict curriculum of okay, if you're in math class, just think okay, you got to do the addition, you got to do subtraction, multiplication, or the derivatives, or whatever you're doing. And they don't really they don't really apply it. Like okay, you can yeah. actually you can actually figure out how much you're gonna earn, like figure out your weekly income, and then you multiply. Like there were there wasn't a class that was just simply based on or using, even you know calculating a mortgage uh, because you know we we learn all that stuff in algebra one. It's it's just basic exponents really for simple interest or compound interest. Um, but you know, I was I was never taught how to calculate compound interest off of uh, you know in algebra one in like my freshman year of high school, right. which you know I probably should have been. Yeah, and I think like like you said, people um, like they get thrown into college and they want to spend all that money. And I think if people like in high school or even early college, if they're being sh- shown like like this is this is why you need to be smart with your money. This is what you'll need money for later in life. That will like teach them the mindset of. I need to be saving this money so that when they do get to college, they're not just spending every penny they earn, and they actually are saving it for like bigger expenses and even investing their money. Thanks. Yeah. Do you think do you think like everyone should be saving their money like every like no matter what you're doing in life, you think everyone should be saving their money, or you think, think there's certain? I think people? everyone should be investing their money. Okay. I think even saving isn't a strong enough word because if you're saving money, you're losing money. That's true. Uh, and. You know, you, there there are some investments you can take that basically have no risk and would, um, you know, hedge your money against inflation. Like what are some investments that you could think of? Government bonds. Okay. Um, I, I can't think of any specific ones, but I remember there was an inflation-backed bond that the government has that everyone can put up to, like, $20,000 into. Really? And, yeah, I mean, the yield right now is 9% because that's what inflation is. And that's essentially a risk-free yield that you could be earning. Um, but, again, I mean, it comes down to the fact that you know, not only do people not know about this stuff, but, you know, everyone who's collected birthday money over the years, that money just gets spent on stuff that it doesn't need to be spent on, which, you know, later on in life where, you know, you see people buying flashy cars and big houses, um, you know, that that gets carried on to an even larger scale where now you're taking on debt instead of just spending money. Yeah, I didn't even know that. That's, that's new knowledge to me. I didn't know there was an inflation-backed uh, bond by the government. I need to, I need to start thinking about buying some of that I didn't that's insane um I'm sure a lot of people that are listening probably didn't even know that so what do you think like Ben like what do you think the first step is for like right now like our school system is set up how it is like obviously there's a lot of flaws in like financial literacy but like like right now what do you think like we can do as an education system and as a society to to promote like financial literacy like in school like yeah so I mean one thing we were talking about is the same way that there's a physical education requirement that you know everyone has to take a gym class why shouldn't there be a financial literacy requirement that everyone has to know how to uh, write a mortgage, um, how to what what percent of your money you should save, depending on how much you earn, or even just you know in general, um, and how much debt you can take on relative to your income. Just you know basic things like that. That you know although they're just a Google search away, that doesn't change the fact that most people don't know this stuff because they're not taught it in school. So I, I think. A pretty simple solution would just be, you know, have a class in school for this stuff. Yeah, it does make sense. I don't, I don't know why there isn't, to be honest. It's like, okay, we obviously, like, everyone knows that money is involved. And, like, yeah. money is, like, a big stressor of everyone's life. Like, there's, it's so obvious. Like, when you're in the real world and you have a job and you're paying bills, like, it clearly influences what you do on a day-to-day basis. It's almost like they're trying to keep most people financially illiterate. <laughs> yeah, it does, man. It really does. I think the same thing. I don't know, I don't know how you can't, like, if someone's looking at that from, like, the outside and they're like, okay, why are we putting these kids through school and we're teaching them? Obviously, like, English and, like, all these other subjects are important depending on what career you want to do, but money surrounds all of those other subjects. And if you don't know how to keep track of your money, you're not going to be able to, like, move forward in your career and, like, do better and bigger things. There's this, uh, there's this video on YouTube. Um, I saw Alex Sedlak, I saw he posted this. It's called The Rat Race. And basically, there's like a dollar bill, just it's flying, the wind's blowing it down the street, and there's this rat chasing it, and just keeps chasing it, it falls into like an office building, and then it, it, it it's about to grab it, and like a mouse trap hits the rat, and but it like, it like keeps it alive, and it's stuck at a desk, and it has to yeah. like start typing, and then it zooms out, and the whole building is just full of like rats at a desk. It's just like a big message. Dang, that, that's pretty deep. Yeah, I saw that like probably two years ago when he made it I, I still remember that yeah that was pretty deep imagine if they played that 
at every senior graduation. You think that would change anything? <laughs> I mean, it's honestly crazy to think that, you know, these people who are earning the most money, they were never the hardest workers in school. They were never, they never studied the most for tests. Um, you know, they, they never learned Calc 3 or anything like that. But at the end of the day, they're on top because they figured out a way to get out of that rat race, right. which, you know, the rest of us who stuck to the school's curriculum didn't necessarily learn how to do because we, we never went above and beyond that. Right. Yeah. I don't know why people, I feel like a big like way to summarize that up is just like leverage, like your time and money. Like if you aren't leveraging like your time and money, then you're just going to keep spending it and you're not going to think about it. But if you put yourself in a situation where you're like investing your money, like you said, and like you're not spending money, more money just because you're earning more money. And if you like do that throughout your whole life, like you're going to be set and you're going to leverage your time and your money. You're going to have a lot more freedom in life than if you didn't do that at all. Kind of doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But, um, also in the same way that school kind of lacks the, uh, the classes and maybe any other things to really set you up to become financial literate. Like there are, if you look hard enough, like there are places where it can help you. Um, and I think one of the, the biggest proponents of that would be like clubs and organizations because students are the ones who can actually start those. Um, so if, if a student saw, for an example, if a student saw, wait, there's no class related to, to blockchain or crypto, then that student could say, hey, I'm going to go start a club um, designated to this exact thing. And I can invite other students who are interested, and I can teach people about it, which me and Kyle just did, actually. <laughs> so if you're at NC State, toot, toot. check the link in the description. <laughs> Way to just set yourself up there. That was, that was golden. No, but yeah, you're right. I think a lot of people don't, they underestimate clubs. There weren't really that many in high school, though. I don't, were there a lot at your school? Then? At my school, I was pretty active in clubs. Yeah, oh, okay. I ran the finance club. Oh, in ran, high school? Yeah. Oh, sweet. I ran a tutoring club. And an astronomy club too. Oh, thank yeah, I was, you. Were, you were a big I was baller. Stacked up. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, I feel like most people don't like use that to their leverage. I feel like we talked about it a lot, in, like in our college, um, is a trap episode, and it's like you got to like use the people around you more yeah. than you actually use the system itself. Like use the people that are in the system instead of yeah, because the, the system teaches you what it thinks you need to know, but then you can go and learn anything you want at clubs. You know, because our I go to UNC, these guys go to NC State. Our schools have massive club networks um you know probably thousands of clubs that you know cover everything you could possibly want so you know there's no reason to not go above and beyond in that way and explore what what you're interested in or what you think you need to know like you know i'm sure there's financial literacy clubs um you know stuff like that it's out there it's just not um it's not as explicit as uh cal three right right <laughs> and i think i think another thing that like should change is like imagine so like we have these counselors and like there's like school like what courses you take for counselors and then there's like mental health counselors which are both necessary but i feel like there should be like a financial counselor and like it shouldn't that that's not going to take a lot of staff for you to employ it's not gonna be a lot of money but if you like hire like a few financial counselors like for a, a school maybe even not even for high school it could be just for college you have like five counselors per grade and you just have to meet with a counselor once a year and all you do is sit down with the counselor they they know like basic financial literacy and they like ask you okay do you have a job like what are you doing with your money like are you paying do you have student loans and, like if you sat down with someone like that like once a year i feel like that would like it would change the way people think about money because because you you know that you're going to meet with that counselor next year so you're like okay i got to i got to be better than i was the past year and you're going to motivate students to get better just by having a simple one meeting with a counselor yeah and, and for that exact reason also, like finances, especially if someone's in a bad place with their finances, like they're not gonna want to tell like their friends or maybe their family because it like it can be like a source of it can be judgmental. Yeah, but like t going to someone like an objective person, like a counselor or an advisor, and like talking to them about it, like that would help a lot. And um, you you guys you actually mentioned this question of like like what could we do to to make school better? So this idea popped into my head. Okay. So I'll, I want to pitch this to you. All right. Okay, I'm ready. So you're in high school, right? You're a freshman. You get to ninth grade and, and you're in high school and immediately, like, you get everyone that joins the high school gets put into this, uh, I guess, call it like a, like a simulation. Like, you get, uh, you get let's call it 20,000 fake, like, paper money, okay? Is this like a virtual reality simulation? No, no, no. It's okay. just like a, it's like an online simulator or okay. something. So you have like $20,000 and you have to, you have to keep up with this simulator, like, all throughout high school, all four years. It could like there could be like a class designated to it or something like that to keep you like more involved. But basically, like you're gonna have like real life things done at you, like expenses, like like student loans and Car stuff crash, like that. Car crash, maybe. Yeah, maybe like, like some, some random 
every like once a week you have to draw a card and something happened like a board game. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then uh and like by the end of the year like you have to be like blah blah, blah like you have to have made the money or you can't have like lost money or something like that. Just like teach you like what it would be like and then maybe the best the people who did the the best with their money get like some sort of opportunity in finance or something like that. But I just think it would be a, a good way to expose people at a younger level to like to what they'll literacy. experience later in life. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, so one thing that I actually started doing uh, a, a couple years ago was uh, the same way these guys founded a club. Um, I started making this machine learning program that would help people with their financial literacy. So, um, you know, it's not available yet, but I'll let you guys know when I'm back on. Okay. It is. Um, so basically, um, you take a survey about how, how well you're you perceive that you know finance. So there's going to be a couple of questions like how familiar are you with X? How familiar are you with um, ways of paying for college? Stuff like that. Um, and then every day, in addition to that, you're going to have uh, three content questions. So these would be like word problems that would ask you like, okay, Nancy makes, uh, Nancy's household makes uh, $100,000 a year. She wants to go to a school that's $80,000 a year. Can she afford that? How much debt would you have to take on? Uh, things like that. And depending on how you answer those questions, it would um, basically self-cater to you and see what you know and what you don't know and uh, give you resources about the things you don't know, basically. Um, kind of like a Khan Academy approach in that way, where it focuses on the information that you're not familiar with. Um, and, you know, stuff like this, if I can code it myself, there's no reason that, you know, it shouldn't be out there already. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think, like, to, like, to emphasize both of your points is, like, both of what you guys just said is, like, interactive. And I think, like, when you're in class, like, you can hear the teacher talk for an hour every day or every other day or whatever it is. And, like, you're not going to take any action and you're not going to learn unless you're, like, doing hands-on stuff. But, like, both of what you said, like, if, if you're asking people questions about, like, finance, they're going to think about that, like, in their own scenario. And same thing with the simulator. Even if, even if the $20,000, like, isn't real money, but they might think about the $200 that they actually have in real life. And, like, it, it teaches them hands-on experience without actually, like, risking anything. And I think... The more like interactive stuff we like incorporate for students and and in school, I think is just even more beneficial because that's even more related to the real world. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see the point in like just you, even even if there was a class that's like budgeting, like if you just have the teacher up there and it's like okay, this is how you budget, this is how you do this, that's kind of like sub level like okay, who's actually going to do anything with that? They're just going to yeah. sit there and pass the class and and leave. But like you, I feel like you got to make it interactive to actually teach someone with anything really. Yeah, I agree. Especially sure. with stuff like this, which is so circumstantial. Like, you know, you're never... This, the stuff you learn in school is usually more theoretical, but, you know, when it comes down to it, everyone's situation is different. And having experience of actually making your own decisions in those different situations is how you become financially literate. So that's another reason why it's important to have simulations. Yeah. So wait, so what, what motivated you to start this? Was it like a project or the, the thing you programmed? So for me, it was honestly just... Um, a realization of the lack of financial literacy like I, I saw a lot of my peers going to schools that you know even with financial aid they couldn't afford um, and you know there's the student loan problem in America is at like 1.5 trillion dollars right now um, so you know I, I knew something had to be done right. so why not take a crack at it myself <laughs> yeah that's awesome so you didn't you haven't posted it anywhere it's just like something you did for a project um, I've, sub I've, I've uh, worked on it with a professor. It was like a research project I did, and we submitted it to some research uh, competitions. But, I mean, mostly, yeah, this is just something where I saw a gap and I tried to fill it, just like a lot of other people. Yeah. I wish there were more people out there doing that. So, actually, I have, a, I have a question for you guys. So, I feel like if you went out on, like, the street and you said to someone, if you won the lottery and you won $1 million, what would you do with it? I feel like everyone would be like, oh, I'd buy a car, I'd buy a house, like, blah, blah. So, like, from a from a perspective of, like, smartest way to, like, winning, you win the lottery, right? You just won a million dollars. What what would how, what do you do with it to be smart with your money, like, in that way? So, like, so like what is the smartest thing yeah, you could do? For myself, right? Like, yeah. for personal gain if you won the lottery. Is that what you're yeah. asking? Like, you want to you take that first, Ben? Sure. Okay. So... If I asked someone on the street, yeah, they would definitely say a Lamborghini or like a townhouse. It's their first thought for sure. Yeah, <laughs> first thought. So what I would do personally is um, I'd pay off my college tuition. 
Um, I After college, I definitely want to live somewhere with roommates just because it's the economical thing to do. And I think when you're, when you're young, it's the time to do it anyway. Um, so I wouldn't buy myself a mansion or anything like that. Um, I definitely invest a lot of my money into lower risk bonds, maybe the spy, um, things like that. Because, you know, one day you're actually going to need this money and you don't know when that's going to be. If you don't need it right now, if you don't have medical bills or, um, you know, like a, like a rainy day type of situation, I would say, you know, take advantage of the situation and save that money for a day when you, you, you will be in that situation. Right. Yeah, that's a great point. I think, I don't know. If I, if I got like a million dollars, you think like, okay, a million dollars, would that last me like my whole life? Probably not, right? I don't think it would. Like if, if you're trying to have a family and kids and you want to like do all these things, I don't think a million dollars would last. So I think what my approach would be is like, how can I turn this money into income? And I think there's, I mean, we could have a whole episode on just how you can get passive income and create create income off of off of money that you already have. And I think I think like the greatest entrepreneurs in the world, that's what they're really best at, is they, they have this income and then they reinvest the income that they just made into another source of income. And then they do it over and over again and then soon you have billionaires like like Mark Cuban and um, I guess Vitalik Buterin's a billionaire now is the name but <laughs> shout out Vitalik Buterin. I think I think I would try to buy some rental properties um, and just see like like don't don't just spend all my money. And I think I would try to use it to my advantage where it could benefit me long term. Um, I don't know. What about you, Sam? Yeah, I mean, I guess like the it's kind of arbitrary, but the the main point I was trying to make with that question is like try not to think of like like the like the your immediate thought after you reason out like valuables would be should be like pay off debt, um, it's like six month emergency fund, one year personal fund, then like any any take out any like mortgages or anything like that that you were thinking about and then like that's when you just start thinking about like invest my money maybe make like purchases okay i'm gonna be honest though but like i don't know we we kind of gave like perfect answers but i would probably buy like something like fun if i got a million dollars oh, for sure like i would probably buy a nice car i wouldn't probably buy a lamborghini that's worth over two hundred thousand dollars i'd probably buy like a nice audi or something along those lines because like i don't know it's just it's just human nature so I, i'm not i, I don't want to act like i'm perfect and i would just be super smart and not spend any of the dollars on on like instant gratification because I definitely would. Yeah. Um. But I think it's I think you have to value. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that as right. long as you do it in a responsible way. Right. Yeah. Like you know, obviously, if you're earning two hundred grand a year, you should buy yourself a nice car, but just don't buy yourself too nice of a car. Yeah. You know, and I mean that's 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 the scale that is financial literacy. It's not it's not uh you know acting like you're broke your whole life. It's just being financially responsible and having that six month emergency fund and things like that. I agree. And then using whatever's left over for personal gratification. Yeah. I think I, I think it's David Ramsey. I don't know if the number's right, but I think he says like don't spend more than ten percent of your income on like a car. Like whatever your income is, like for that year, if your car is more than ten percent of it, then don't buy that car and keep it under that. I, I don't know if that's the right number, so don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure um, things like, like rules like that that you keep track of and like you follow those rules if you follow these rules that successful people are giving you like they're giving you the rules for a reason and like if you surround yourself with like the knowledge that they're giving you and you apply it to your life like there's no reason that, that people shouldn't be successful with their money and they shouldn't be responsible because there's so much information out there and uh, there, there's one of my favorite places for information I, I personally like is Twitter <laughs> just because of like the, the broad range of topics you can see on there and it's like quick it's like okay what's the max limit on twitter it's like 200 characters for um a tweet but one of my favorite things on twitter is the threads so <laughs> something something that i think we're going to do is maybe in the future here too but we're going to test it out in this episode is like have one of our favorite threads of the month and uh me and sam will just talk through like why we like the thread and then um so a few like parts of the thread on what we like so you want to you want to kick off that yeah soon? sure um just one thing you did say is like that you love about Twitter's the threads, but they have just gotten so out of hand. Like the most simple piece of information, everyone tries to make it into a thread because it like it's so much better for the algorithm. But yeah, obviously things like this that are so informative. So the thread I was gonna I was gonna talk about Brian Feroldi, like easily one of the best follows on Twitter, like in terms of financial literacy, which is exactly what we're talking about. But he uh, he put out a thread. This is, a. Uh, it's actually, it, it's not as old as I thought. It's a few months old, but he says, 15 timeless investing principles visualize. And a couple of ones I really want to leave you guys with is, uh, we'll put this graphic on the screen, but 
he says focus on financial wellness before you start like investing in stocks which i think is important because a lot of people will say like like this is like a a stigma i guess is like oh like invest all your money just invest 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 and like it kind of makes people angry i i think because they're like oh like i don't want to invest my money i want to like do this or do that like that's that's not safe but it's like take care of the things you need to with your money and then with the money you have left over that's when you can start investing it don't like carelessly invest which i think is super important yeah that's that's a great point that's like just what this whole episode is about like learn first and then and then invest after you learn everything what else what else is valuable from that thing um also so it's a we'll put this one up as, as well it's a graph all right and it's it basically shows when you're um when you're like younger or when you're when your net worth is is lower you want to prioritize a savings rate and then when you're when you're older that's when your investing returns are what matters so basically like us we're 20 years old what we want to be focusing on is saving as much as possible because we have as little expenses as we will for our entire life like and taxes yeah that too like such a lower tax bracket like as we get older we're just going to be spending more money because we're going to have houses cars things like that so you want to save as much money and then as you get older your savings rate isn't going to be that important but what will be important is that you're investing in good companies or good mutual funds and stuff like that yeah that's wise any thoughts on that ben yeah i mean that's definitely a good point um i mean another point is that at our age right now we can afford the risk of you know losing our money whereas when we're older we can't Mm -hmm. so that's why right now we should just try to accumulate and then later we actually have to worry about okay i have this money now time for it to go up yeah and not go down yeah (laughs) that's even more important um but yeah i'll link this thread in the show notes but i mean it's a great thread those are just two of my favorites okay okay i guess my turn up um i found this thread it was by nicholas cole um 77 on twitter we'll link this in the show notes as well um he just says it's 18 things about life success wealth and happiness i wish someone had told me as an 18 year old seeing as we're 20 i think we could learn a few things here um so I, i just picked out a few um, like points that he makes. Uh, one of the first ones I want to highlight is everyone is too busy worrying about themselves to notice your failures. I feel like a lot of people get like self-conscious and they're like, okay, what if I go start a business about like, if I go start a car washing business, like everyone's going to make fun of me and like they're like, you're going to be thinking about what everyone else is going to think about you. But if like what he's, what point he's trying to make is like, they're too busy worrying about their own lives and they're not going to worry. Like you're, you're not going to like lose all your friends because you go out and start a car business and if, even if you fail the car washing business it's not going to change like if your friends leave you for that then obviously they aren't your friends in the first place so just try not try not to worry about whatever other people are thinking about you yeah and i think that that really paints like a valuable lesson which is like don't care what other people think like even if they aren't too busy with themselves and they do like notice and like hate on you for something like it doesn't matter that's their own fault and like most of the reason most of the time if someone's like hating on you for something, it's purely out of jealousy. So you just you can't you gotta ignore that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a great point. And the next the next um, highlight that I want to make actually is kind of relevant. Uh, it makes it said he says if you can't manage a thousand dollars, you can't manage a million dollars, which goes hand in hand with our lottery question. If so, if you give if you get gifted a thousand dollars and you spend that thousand dollars, chances are if you get gifted a million dollars, you're gonna go out and spend that million dollars. So just like. I think he's just emphasizing like, okay, you should start early. And like, your, if your income isn't high, you should learn how to manage your income even if it is $200 a week. And then if it gets to that point where you're making $2,000 a week or $2,000 a day, then you'll still apply the same concepts that you had to get to that point um, from 200 to $2,000. Um, and then another point, um, uh, these are kinda, these are kinda you, we could like dive into these um, pretty deep. So let me try to go fast on these last two. Okay, um, as long as expenses rise to meet your income, you'll never have enough money. Um, and this kind of, touches on what we were saying like if you're spending more money when you're gaining more money you're not going to gain any more freedom and you want to make sure that you're increasing your savings rate and your investing rate as you gain more um gain a higher income and then lastly um you aren't happy when you're happy while and i think i really like this point because it's like you shouldn't you shouldn't enjoy like the goal you shouldn't enjoy okay i want to be a millionaire you shouldn't be happy just because you get to a million dollars you should be happy like get going along that journey to a million dollars yeah, because I've heard a lot of stories about people who sort of gave up their social lives in their 20s to accumulate money and are now millionaires. And, like, my question to them would be, like, you know, was it worth it really? Because, sure, you have money now, but you, you weren't happy while you were earning it, you know? Like, like sure, work hard, but working 20-hour days, five days a week is, 
you know, probably not the way to go, especially during what are supposed to be the best years of your life. Yeah. So enjoying the journey is much more important than, you know, accumulating the wealth, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, also, like, once you do, like, get a job, like, make sure it's something you enjoy. Don't just do it because someone else said you should or because your parents come and see you. Like, make sure it's something you enjoy or you're not going to enjoy that journey. Right. If you're doing something your whole life and you're not enjoying it, your life probably won't be that great. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much money you're making if you hate what you're doing. Yeah. I agree. I think that was, I think I like this little thread thing because it, mm-hmm. it's like hearing other people's perspectives on things. And, and you know that there's other people out there that are trying to spread education because it's all about helping everyone as, as one and like spreading financial literacy throughout our whole society. I think it starts with education. Any last points you want to make, Ben? I mean, it's all out there. You just have to look for it. Right. You know? um, the best guys in the world are giving their advice out there for free on Twitter. You just have to make the effort to to spend the time to learn it. Um, otherwise, you know, you're gonna be you're gonna be stuck in the bubble your whole life, I guess. Right. That's a great point. Awesome. This is solid. For sure. We appreciate everyone that joined. Hope you guys learned something. Go out and practice financial literacy in your community. Find all the links in the comments yep. or description. For sure. Catch, Catch you next time. Next one.